Hey guys, this is Remy, and I didn't wait for the response. I just bought it anyways because I love the game so much, and I'm going to start playing it uh, for you guys, whether you guys like it or not. Ha! Huh. <laughs> so here we go. The end is never. The end is loading. <laughs> see what they did there? I see what they did there. <laughs> This is the story I'm not skipping of a man anything. Named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee wow. 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in. That would so have been made exactly definitely be soul rending. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, wow. call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, clearly. frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Did I? I guess I'm Stanley. I can't push the thing on the keyboard. I guess I'm supposed to tip, step out of my office because that's what the guy said. Oh, that's where I came out of the elevator. Look, that's where I came out of the elevator in the demo. Uh, there's nobody All of his coworkers here. were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I guess. I'm supposed to go to the meeting room. Okay. Well, nobody's like nobody's when here. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Uh, did I? Did I? This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. <laughs> it had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Did I? But eager to get back to business, back to Stanley business. took the first open door on his left. I can go in there, because that's what he said. Or I can keep going. <laughs> Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I didn't say that. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Is there? Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. For her? There's a girl involved? This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself, to put your work aside, to let her back into your life. Is it? She's been waiting. 
Where is she? Is she hot? This is a very dark room. And somebody's been smoking a lot of cigarettes. Okay. Okay. So I've done like literally nothing the guy has told me to do like, since I started. Oh, what? That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then. Oh, I cut him off. I'm sorry. I should have let him finish talking. She oh, sounds a bit dingy. I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. <laughs> gotcha. Wow. Oh, come on. That wasn't funny. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? No. Who would want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. <laughs> I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Okay. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. What? Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. <coughs> Look at Bless his me. pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now, he's eating lunch. Now, he's going home. Now, he's coming back to work. One might even feel this sorry needs some hair. except that he's chosen this life. But in his mind... Oh, I'm, it's making me do it. I can't mind, he push can something different. Fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Yeah. Fantastic discoveries. Am I going to die? Hands. No. It was wonderful. I don't want to die. Each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Press Q to watch TV. What if I push 8? Push T? Q. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. Spend some time with the boys. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. Yeah? I had to prepare dinner. As he wandered through this fantasy world, Whoa. he began to fill it with many possible paths and I get it. I get it. Down one path, it's turning into my office. Round room with monitors and mind controls. Yeah. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions, and down another was a game with a baby. It's and turning into my it office. The Stanley Parable. It was such a wonderful fantasy, and so in his head he relived it again and then again and again. The clock is actually over, moving. Wishing beyond hope that it would never end. That he might always feel this free. This free. Surely there's an answer down some new path. Mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. I love you. But there is no oh. answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, wow. he's slowly killing himself. Slowly killing myself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, 
The next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? That's wonderful. I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. Not so different. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I... <laughs> Did I die? We're loading again, okay. The end is loading. Okay. Are we back here now? Okay. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Did I lose? Is that what happened? Oh, that's the room I want to go into. Right there. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. That's the one on my left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Oh wow, this could Perhaps be hours of fun. by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Okay. Wow. Yes. This room. What a beautiful room. What a gorgeous, gorgeous room. Thank goodness Stanley had taken this detour on his way to the meeting room. Life without having experienced this room was now too horrible even to consider. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on See what he does. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Broom closet. The staircase. Coming to the staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Is this... Stepping Man, into his manager's awesome office, office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. At all. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, eight, four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. <laughs> Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. All right. Yes. Down we go. All right. Loading. The end is not loading this time, so maybe I didn't die. I should keep doing the opposite of what he says. Descending deeper yeah. into the choice. Building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. 
It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. No. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. All right. All right. The Stanley Parable. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large mind door of the red mind control facility. Nope. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Nice. I'm going to die now. <laughs> the door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to yep. walk forward and willingly confront his death. Yes. <laughs> What's loading now? The end is obviously not loading. I didn't die. As the machine whirred into motion, Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise. It reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Yep. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He uh. doesn't know the real <laughs> story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blue. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. I can do nothing about it. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine <laughs> crushed every bone in his body, yeah. killing him instantly. I've been rescued. There was a different narrator. Nice. This Stanley. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his <laughs> office as alive as ever. Nice. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, Death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Is this is this is the credits? Nice. I still have choices. Those numbers look all too familiar. Nice. Is that more credits? More endings, fewer endings. More narrators, fewer narrators, more Stanley, less Stanley. This is so cool. The apartment timer. In a previous version of the choice leading to the apartment ending, the timer would give you 15 seconds to pick up the phone. Not picking up the phone would lead to a different ending. Wow. Wow, what did I find?
the escape in you. Nice. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy <laughs> She's one another. Us. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. <laughs> Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. <laughs> Sometimes they can't. But listen to me. You can still save those two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose you. Don't let time... Don't you... <laughs> oh, I did pause it. I could have uh, restarted. But I didn't. But I didn't. That's wonderful. Oh, wow. I can't do anything but that. Begin the game again. Nice. So yeah, I guess I'll call it good there, and that was a lot of fun. <clears throat> and we'll try some different options next time, and stuff, and things. And uh, yeah, you guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, and tune in next time, because we're going to do some different stuff here, and it'll be a lot of fun. All right. Bye!